In this video, I'll discuss the Puma Trinocular Camera Port module, which allows an ocular lens or a camera to be added to the side of the advanced filter block, using the Epi Illumination port as an imaging output path, instead of an illumination input. The Trinocular Camera Port reuses a number of modules that have previously been described. For example, it fits into the filter block with the same polarizing connector used for the Epi Illuminator described in the video on Epi Illumination. It also uses the same mirror block ocular assembly used in the lower outlet of the binocular head or the ergo monocular head, and the standard C mount extension and lock nut system, and all these modules were described in the video on the ocular heads. In fact, the only modules that are unique to the trinocular camera port are the parts that articulate to the polarizing connector, namely a modified mirror block tube or MBT for the ocular assembly and a modified ocular thread to accept the C mount extension. These modules are modified in that they have an adjust collar built into one end and they are of the appropriate length to ensure par focality with the ocular head modules. One advantage of using the adjust ring and collar connector is that you have a large degree of rotational and centration adjustment to help align the image you see or capture in this trinocular port with any image simultaneously being viewed or recorded with the ocular head. The rotational freedom also allows you to position an ocular lens at a convenient ergonomic viewing angle or to position a camera so as to prevent it from getting in the way of any ocular head modules. The polarizing connector is used for reasons that will soon be explained. However, if for any reason you do not want a polarizer in the light path, you can simply make a polarizing attachment without the polarizing filter. In that case, you need to reduce the ocular cap gap, or OCG, by about a quarter of a millimeter to compensate for the reduced light path caused by removing the polarizing filter. This adjustment is detailed in the video on the ocular heads. Likewise, you will need to reduce the distance to any C-mount camera chip by the same amount using your C-mount camera's built-in focus adjustment or by printing a shorter version of the C-mount attachment parts. Recall from the video on beam splitters and the advanced filter block that we built the filter block with the coated surface of the beam splitter facing the AR projector port because we want the best quality image from the projector. For this reason, using the opposite side of the beam splitter for imaging into the trinocular camera port results in a suboptimal image due to the fact that the imaging beam from the objective will now have to pass through the beam splitter glass twice, and it also hits the non-coated surface of the beam splitter before it reaches the coated semi-reflective surface. This can result in a visible ghost image, that is, a secondary weak reflection image that is offset relative to the main image. The first issue results in chromatic and spherical aberrations, which we can't do much to correct without additional expensive optics. However, these aberrations are limited due to the very thin amount of glass used in the beam splitter plate, and so the image is still usable. The second issue of ghost images can be addressed by placing a rotatable polarizer in the imaging beam path. This can help because the image reflected from the plain glass surface of the beam splitter will be partially polarized due to the physics of reflection at a refracting surface, as was demonstrated in the video on the transpolarizing illuminator. There we saw how the maximum polarizing effect occurs at a specific angle of reflection called Brewster's angle. Now, we have no control over the angle of reflection here. It has to be 45 degrees for the beam splitter to function as intended. So, the reflected ghost image beam will not be fully polarized. Nevertheless, it will be partially polarized and so can be partially attenuated using a polarizing filter, as shown in this demo. In this demo, I use a rotating polarizer that fits on top of the condenser. 
and in this situation the rotatable polarizing thumb wheel of the trinocular port acts as an analyzer. Although extinction will occur whenever these two polarizers are at 90 degrees to each other, the Brewster effect at the beam splitter means that extinction will only be partial for most starting angles of the polarizer. Whenever the extinction is low, you get an exaggerated ghost image as seen here. Here the extinction is very low and the ghost image is very prominent. But if I change the angle of the crossed polars, I will eventually find an angle where extinction is maximal. And at this orientation, the ghost images seen around the extinction point effectively disappear, as you can see here. This is one of the reasons the trinocular port uses the polarizing attachment to the filter block. Another limitation of using the epi-illumination port for imaging is that you can't do epi-illumination simultaneously while using the trinocular camera port. That is, unless you put the epi-illuminator on the top of the filter block in place of an ocular head, but then that would bring its own problems. So, with all these limitations of the trinocular camera port, why bother with it at all? Well, there are two major advantages of the trinocular camera port that make it a worthwhile module. The first is that because this module attaches to the side of the filter block, it can be used simultaneously with any ocular head configuration up to and including the binocular head. This means that you can attach up to a maximum of three cameras to Puma simultaneously to record different aspects of the same sample at the same time. For example, by using different types of camera, aperture settings, shutter speeds, cross-polarization angles, wavelength filters, magnifications, etc. This is especially important for samples that are dynamic and change quickly over time, such that sequential imaging would be inadequate. Here I show one such application on an actively moving sample. For this I record with a focal eyepiece projection on the lower outlet of the binocular head to give a whole field of view image, while at the same time I use a focal eyepiece projection to a different camera on the upper outlet of the binocular head which uses a different camera lens to give a higher magnification image of the same object. And also, I record at the trinocular camera port using C-mount direct chip projection and crossed polarization to give the highest magnification image in a different modality. Before I move on to the next part of this video, I would ask that if you like these Puma videos, please take a second to support the project by clicking on the big red subscribe button and give the video a thumbs up. If you have social media accounts, also please share these videos on them using the YouTube share button. Ok, now back to the rest of this video. The second major advantage of the trinocular port is its ability to enable augmented reality or AR microscopy by optical erasure of the HUD. This needs a bit of explanation. The AR projector will be described in another video, but essentially it projects an image of a computer controlled TFT screen and superimposes this image onto the focused primary optical image of the specimen formed by the objective. 
This enables the user to see the information on the TFT screen at the same time as the specimen while looking down the ocular. This kind of hybrid display where a video image is projected onto a live optical view is called a heads-up display or HUD. A digital HUD on its own is not AR, but it can be used to implement AR by allowing you to see additional information about the optical scene you are looking at. For example, the HUD can be made to highlight certain features of the specimen according to some criteria, such as whether those features are abnormal in some way, or by providing additional information about certain objects, such as measurements or motion tracks. In this way, the optical view down the specimen, that is, the reality, is augmented by the digital overlay HUD. To implement advanced AR, a programmer needs to analyze the scene you are currently looking at in order to produce the augmented information about it. The AR software must therefore capture images of the scene at the same time as you are looking at the scene. However, there is a potential problem in doing this. Recall from the demo in the video on beam splitters and the advanced filter block that the AR projector will project its hard image onto all outputs of the beam splitter. This means that any camera at any outlet will see the superimposed HUD and this will partly obscure the image and so hamper attempts to process the captured image of the specimen to get the required information. This can be especially a problem if your AR system is trying to get information about tiny particles that could get obscured under bright HUD features. So how does the trinocular camera port help since the image here is also contaminated by the HUD overlay? The answer is to use the trinocular port's rotatable polarizer to optically erase the HUD from the image in this port only. This works because the HUD is generated by a TFT display module, and the light from the TFT display used in Puma is linearly polarized. By setting the plane of polarization of the trinocular port polarizer at 90 degrees to the plane of polarization of the TFT display, you effectively filter out the TFT display image thereby optically erasing the superimposed HUD in this port only. You can now record a clean image of the specimen at the trinocular camera port while the user continues to see the HUD superimposed on their visual fields. These are the parts and the tools you'll need to build the trinocular camera port. Thanks to Puma's modular ethos, much of this was covered in previous videos, so will not be repeated here. The making of the ocular mirror block, adjustable ocular holder assembly, and the parts for attaching a C-mount camera as well as the parts for attaching the ocular mirror mount to the mirror block tube are exactly the same as was described in the video on the ocular heads. The polarizing connector to the advanced filter block was described in the videos on the Transpolarizing Illuminator and Epi Illumination. The modified MBT and the modified C mount ocular thread just need printing and cleaning up from any stray plastic as usual. Slide in the ocular mirror block into the modified MBT without any tube spacers and fix it in place with the same light shield cap and ring nut as described in the video on the ocular heads. For the C-mount system, simply thread the C-mount extension fully onto the modified C-mount ocular thread. Your trinocular camera port assembly is now complete and ready to use. The augmented reality projector and more information about AR microscopy will be described in separate videos. Thanks for watching.